Pope Francis has welcomed doctors and nurses from the coronavirus ravaged re region of Lombardy to the Vatican to thank them for their selfless work and heroic sacrifice. Francis dedicated one of his first post-lockdown audiences to Italy's frontline medical personnel. He told the delegation that the example of professional competence and compassion would help Italy forge a new future of hope and solidarity. The northern region of Lombardy was the hardest hit region in the one-time European epicenter of the pandemic. It has counted more than 92,000 of Italy's 232,000 infections and half of Italy's 34,500 dead. Pope Francis also took a dig at some conservative priests who defied at the lockdown chuffed at the lockdown measures, calling their complaints adolescent. Joining us now is Alan Holden, Eternal World Television Network, Rome Bureau Chief. Thank you very much for joining us. It's good to be here with you. Thank you. Now, the Pope was seen thanking health workers. What impact would this you know, have um, on all those still um, in the front line? Yeah, the, the Holy Father has really proclaimed his support uh, far and wide since the beginning of this pandemic, uh, especially for healthcare workers. He's dedicated his morning mass to healthcare workers repeatedly, uh, and he's, he's constantly in any public event, it seems, uh, which have included his general audiences on Wednesdays and also his, uh, his weekly Angelus prayers throughout all of this. Uh, he's always dedicating prayers to all of those working on the front lines. So I think uh, for a lot of the people who came uh, as part of this private audience with him, um, for them, it was a chance to see him in person and to thank him directly. And it was a chance for him to thank them directly for all of the work that they've done. Will Holy Masses resume at the Vatican anytime soon or has it already begun? Yes, it's already begun. Uh, they're, they're very small. I mean, in Italy, uh, we did have a return several weeks ago to, to Mass uh, in limited circumstances. Uh, obviously, you've got to keep that three-foot distance, that one-meter distance. Um, and so I went to Mass this morning, for example, in my local parish, and uh, people haven't come back in large numbers. You know, a lot of people are still following the Mass by way of, of technology. Uh, but there are quite a few people there. It's just that you obviously you can't fill a, a church if you've got those measures in place. But you can celebrate Mass inside St. Peter's Basilica and also in the, the parish of St. Anne's, which is the, the Vatican's parish. You can access that. Okay. So could you share with us some of the things you believe that Italy did uh, to come out um, of the virus, I mean, being tagged the worst hit that other countries can learn from? Yes. Um, so basically in the very beginning, when they, were, when they found the first cases in the north of Italy, uh, you mentioned the Lombardy region had so many, so many deaths, they've had more than 16,500. And that was because they had a great number of infections in, in just very limited spaces, in cities in particular. And so uh, when they found the first cases, uh, if they had had it to do over again, they would have isolated those regions completely. What happened was there was there were loose regulations. It wasn't stringent, and so you had small what they call focolai, which are these areas of of uh, infection that became larger and larger because there was no real strict measure put in place, and that eventually led to the lockdown of all of Italy. Uh, if they had limited successfully those uh, contagions in those smaller areas then it wouldn't have led or had to have led to the total lockdown of the country. So I think putting measures in place early on uh, would have done it. But uh, Italy was the first sort of Western nation to be hit hard by this. Uh, everyone can learn le lessons from, from Italy from here forward. All right. We do know from data that um, a large population of those uh, that gave uh, the figures we uh, found from Italy was the old people. What measures have been put in place to protect uh, this demography going forward? Well, it's um, the social distancing, so staying more than three feet away from any other person uh, out on the streets or inside. You cannot enter into any sort of business here in Italy today uh, without uh, first putting on your mask. So everybody's got masks. You, you wash your hands with uh, that, that liquid sanitizer. Every single business at the front door has a, a bottle of it. So you walk in and you use it and you come inside. 
they limit the number of people that step inside. Um, but then also, uh, many of the elderly people aren't going out into the streets. Uh, those who do really carefully manage those restrictions, uh, a lot of people have stepped up and uh, serve as a sort of mediator between the elderly so they can stay at home and, uh, and services. So they, they take, uh, you know, for example, groceries to and from the homes of the elderly. We, we feel particularly here, I am at home, uh, we feel very particularly sensitive to the elderly in our building here. And uh, so we, we try to make sure that we keep ourselves uh, safe and, and without infection so that we don't bring it back home to this building to them. Thank you very much, uh, Alan, for giving us an idea what's going on and what we can learn from you. Thank you so much.